In your auto watch today, General Motors announced that it will resume plug-in hybrid technology for certain cars they produce. They last sold plug-in hybrids in 2019 with the Chevy Volt. GM CEO Mary Barra said that the company remains committed to the goal of cutting all tailpipe emissions in those cars by 2035, but these hybrids will be helpful while the EV infrastructure is built back up. The timing of the rollout was not announced, but Barr says that EVs are the focus this year. Joining us to talk about this announcement are Wayne State Professor of Management, Merrick Masters, as well as Editor-in-Chief of Headlight.News, Paul Eisenstein. Thank you both for being here. Pleasure to be Good here. Good to be with you. So as we just noted, uh, GM was in the plug-in hybrid game, if you will, and kind of has moved away from it in recent years. Now they're moving right back. Merrick, what does that signal to you? Well, it signals that it's a step, as they said, in order to comply with certain regulations about emission standards and to ease the transition to electrification. I think it's really a short-term measure to get them over a hump in this transition. And they're taking a page, I think, from Toyota that has um, used this approach as a way to segue into electrification. And Paul, what is your initial reaction to this announcement? I reported that this was going to happen back in November. Uh, it's no surprise whatsoever. In fact, it's an extremely smart move uh, for one to get them into a segment that is growing rather rapidly, but also to be able to come on to competitors such as uh, as uh, Stellantis. You may recall that all the automakers, all the big guys, are going to be launching electrified pickup trucks. Stellantis really made some big news when they announced they would put in a range extender, essentially a plug-in hybrid that would help overcome concerns about range, particularly when towing. GM is really smart in trying to do something similar. This all of a sudden makes an, a, a hybrid, in this case a plug-in, much more attractive, much more attractive to conventional pickup buyers who want to do some heavy duty towing or travel long distances. I expect that pickups will be one of the things that we will see with the new plug-in hybrid package, but we'll also probably see uh, some, uh, some of their larger SUVs. And we may see a couple other products that surprise us. You know, we've already seen with the Chevrolet Corvette E-Ray that electrifying a gas powertrain can be a lot of fun to drive. It is the fastest product they have right now. So we have talked a lot uh, with both of you about the transition to fully electric vehicles and the reticence or hesitation for a lot of people to make that jump. So Paul, are plug-ins sort of a stepping stone? Are people who buy plug-in hybrids a little more likely to go full EV on that next car purchase? That's a really good, a really good understanding of what's happening. Yes, uh, there's a general, a general rule out there that people get more comfortable with electrified vehicles the moment they get into them and experience what they can do. And we are seeing that people who are comfortable with regular hybrids and plug-ins tend to then become more familiar with and comfortable with going to fully electrified vehicles. For some folks, frankly, plug-in hybrids are simply going to be the right solution, maybe on the long term. I wouldn't be surprised even after 2035 if GM does offer a few plug-in hybrids over the long term, particularly for vehicles that have to do heavy, heavy-duty tow towing and long-range travel. Mm -hmm. But yes, this is a step, a stepping stone, as you put it, towards full electrification. Uh, Merrick, would you say that this is a sign that this company is committed to helping push the transition of that change over to these types of vehicles? Yes, and I think it's, uh, as Paul suggested, realizing what customers want. They want that step, intermediate step between going fully electric, and this is a good way to do it. Uh, it eases the transition, and there also may be some longer-term opportunities for them to take advantage of. It's necessary for their competitiveness, but you know, anecdotally, I've had a number of people tell me that uh, they're not ready for an electric car, mm -hmm. but they are ready for a hybrid or they have a hybrid. It's a good transition. In fact, I was talking to an engineer uh, who used to work at GM, and he said, you know, the solution to the bridge to electrification is the hybrid. And mm -hmm. the sales of hybrids grew about 76% last year, which is more than the sales of EVs grew. Okay. So General Motors would be missing out on a great opportunity. So everyone's yeah, if, ready to save I, on gas. 
Yeah, yes. if I can add this point, uh, for the first time since EVs started taking off, we actually saw regular hybrids outsell them this last year, just slightly. They made up about 8% of the U.S. new vehicle market last year, a couple of points, a couple of tenths ahead of EVs. But that shows that Americans are getting comfortable with electrifying their vehicles. They're just still waiting for the right solutions to come along. And in the short term, when we don't have enough uh, uh, public chargers, and we may not have enough range for some people, and so on. Hybrids and plug-ins are going to become a very, very important part of the future. I expect by the latter part of the decade, the vast majority, the vast majority of vehicles sold in the U.S. will have some form of electrification, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, maybe even fuel cell technology, mm -hmm. and of course, all EV. All right. Well, Paul Eisenstein and Merrick Masters, thank you both so much. We appreciate your time. Pleasure thank being you. here.